have never before seen photos today of one of Saturn's moons and why it matters. Now beaming back to Earth. Check it out now. It is the best look yet at a tiger stripe, a crack in the surface of Saturn's moon, spewing water vapors, creating huge plumes of ice. And you wonder, why does that matter? Well, Michio Kaku is a theoretical physics professor and host of the new Science Channel series, Sci-Fi Science, Physics of the Impossible. My guest in studio, good morning to you. Once considered boring moons, boring no more. I mean, these images are amazing, but what do we look at, Michio? Well, realize that uh, by rights, uh, Enceladus, this moon of Saturn, should be frozen over. I mean, we are a billion miles away from the sun when you look at these photographs. By rights, they should be frozen, but there we have a new energy source, a new energy source melting the ice, pushing perhaps a hundred geysers into space. So, so this, this uh, planet, or this moon in this case, I mean, it's always changing and moving, that creates the friction, and that what generates the heat, and that's what melts the ice, which leads me to, is there life there? Possibly. If there's uh, water. Yeah, think of a racquetball or a tennis ball. As it tumbles around Saturn, it rotates and it's squeezed by gravity. That causes friction, as you pointed out. That causes heat, which melts the ice, meaning that some of these moons actually have liquid oceans underneath the ice cover. Not just geysers, but oceans. And that's why James Cameron put Avatar on Whoa. Pandora, a moon of a Saturn-like planet. What in the world's Avatar got to do with this? Because if you remember the movie, that moon, Pandora was set uh, revolving around a Saturn-like planet. We now realize that Mars is not the only game in town. We now have moons of Jupiter, like uh, Europa, moons of Saturn, like Enceladus, that have geysers, liquid oceans underneath the ice cover, which means that life may exist way out there so a billion you're miles saying away. That the, the old thinking and the logic was you had to be close to the sun in order to support life because you needed the heat. That's right. Now you're saying that could all be changed now based on these images. This is a game changer. We used to think there's a Goldilocks zone around the sun. If the Earth is too close, you have steam. If the Earth is too far, it gets frozen over. But this is new. We have a new energy source, gravity. The squeezing of these moons by gravity, creating friction, creating heat, melting the ice. You know what I say, Michio? I say boring no more. Yeah? <laughs> I mean, look what we've got out there. Great right? to see you, my friend, on a Friday, and good luck, okay? Mm -hmm. Michio Kaku here. Martha